Let's segue into this bitch. That's right. Because while we was, you know, getting ready to do the episode, the internet went down. And, uh, you know, he's got kids. And the look on the kid's face when the Netflix went dead was kind of like, what do I do now? <laughs> it's that dumbfounded look of shock that kids get when they have no clue what's going on. Yeah. Which actually was kind of like what we were doing because, as you know, we're professional as fuck. Yeah. And we were going to do some research onto the episode we were going to do today. No. But thanks to the internet going down, we weren't able to do that. But And then even when it came back, we couldn't find the video anyway, so, you know. Yeah, so, so you know what that got us thinking? What did people used to do before the internet? Yeah, what did we used to do? Yeah, that's right. We had to delve in our way back machine. Mm -hmm. well, go back I mean, to the... Kind of. We'll go back to the 90s. I mean, even like when the internet first came out, mm -hmm. being when we first got it, not when it actually first yeah. came out. And not like, you know, in the, in the 80s when it was just being used for companies. I'm talking about like in the mid to late 90s when it became like America Online was opening the doors of the internet to every stupid troll on the internet. Yeah. People who should have never been given access to the internet suddenly had it. And we're still feeling the effects of that horrible tragedy today. Exactly. Our producer is so mad about it right now, he is throwing things. He is literally throwing pots and pans in anger. Mm-hmm. Angry. Maddest producer ever. I don't know why we keep him around. I don't know. He was literally born a year ago. Mm-hmm. Totally not qualified for the job. We should have hired that hot secretary. Yeah, well, you know, if things don't work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't belly ache, pal. So, yeah. I mean, we are looking at back then. Even back then, when we had the internet, it was still, you know, dial-up. Couldn't do shit on dial-up. Yeah. I mean, it was like chat rooms full of idiots. Yeah. Definitely wasn't like it is today in regards yeah. to, uh, you know, you could spend hours, but those hours are spent through, like, websites with text. But damn, that shit was even before, like, Flash. Yeah. This was back when, like, you're the man now, dog. Remember that? Yeah. With all the GIFs and the, like, sound synced up to them? Yeah. That was, like, the original YouTube. I have to, like, look that up. Like, See if it's still around? Yeah, I'm sure it is. You know, somebody saved it somewhere. Snape uh, killed Dumbledore. Yeah. Snape killed. Snape killed. Dumbledore. 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 You got that one for free. Mm-hmm. So, Spoilers, yeah. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers, because, you know, people haven't, some people haven't read the books. Yeah, or seen the movies. So what I was thinking was, you know, back in the day when there was, like, nothing to do and the chat rooms were boring, you know, you break out, like, board games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember, I actually, I was watching um, the Spoonie Experiment, a lot of his videos, and he did a video on a board game called Dark Tower. Big circular board, comes in two parts. Put it together in the middle, put these little plastic buildings on it. It's kind of three-dimensional. And in the middle, there's a big fuck-off tower. It's like this tall. It's got buttons and a rotating light-up display in the middle. It was really cool. We had that when I was a kid. And then we didn't have it at a certain point. I might have broken it or lost some pieces, or maybe it just got old, didn't work, and we, you know, threw it away. But I was watching him play the game, and I'm like, holy shit, that was like a lot of fun. I mean, I got some good board games in my collection. I got like Klingon Monopoly, where you can actually win by flipping the table or stabbing an opponent. Because Klingons. Yeah. Uh, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer board game. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was almost like an RPG all by itself, but you played as characters from Buffy. And that board was kind of three-dimensional. Yeah, that was fun. I played that one with you. There was one board game. I don't know if we ever got to play it. I think this might have been after you moved out here. But it was a Jurassic Park board game. Long-ass board with little pop-up buildings on it. And one person played as the dinosaurs, and the other person played as the people trying to get off the island. Oh yeah, no, I did play that with you. I that was that. a fun game. Remember the zombies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still have all those. I've got, like, there's 12 expansions to that now. I've got uh, them all. The last one was an office building, which kind of was like, aww. I like the clown, just because of the glow-in-the-dark clown zombies. Well, yeah, that, that actually was the worst expansion of all of them, because there was that card... That kept sucking you back into the carnival, and then you had to go find a circus car, like a bumper car, to drive out of it. If you didn't find the bumper car, 
you were basically stuck in that damn circus forever. So every now and then I would just throw a card and throw somebody back to the circus, and they'd be like, "No!" And you get, you have to get into the woods and get to the chopper. Yeah, I mean, all those ex original expansions could actually be grouped together into a gigantic board game, but you'd need like an epic amount of table to play it to its full capacity. Yeah, and then I don't think it was until the uh, the carnival one that they actually delved into supernatural. Because just going into the story, it was more like a normal, like kind of yeah. like virusy zombie kind of thing. It was like you know, Fifty Shades of Resident Evil. And then all of a sudden, like it's like a magic evil carnival. Yeah, thing. and that was the last time that ever happened. I think because the rest of them were just like zombies in different environments. Yeah. Well, maybe the maybe this carnival was always there and just coincidental. Yeah, I think this just happened at a bad time. I mean, it's like the magical carnival rolls into town to do something else, and like there's just zombies, yeah. and they're like, oh. Or it, like, it comes back like every 50 years, and it just happened to be like, you know, the year that an actual zombie apocalypse was happening. Came back at a bad time. All the demons were sitting in the park just like, wait, where is everybody? Like, <laughs> we should be attracting more people. Hey, man, there should be more people coming. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, shit. And it's like, damn it. So, yeah, <coughs> just looking back at, like, all this stuff we used to do, you know, um, I remember Omega Virus, which was kind of like Dark Tower, but it was more of a futuristic setting where you're in a space station where a crazy AI is going to destroy the world, and you have to go around collecting the parts of this weapon that can be used to destroy the AI, and if you, and it can actually kill you or destroy your weapons, and it's the, this thing is actively trying to stop you from winning. So you're not just playing against other players, the actual game is trying to beat your friggin' head in. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, board games were fun, I mean, as long as you had other people to play them with, but... Yeah. That's actually the good thing about Dark Tower, uh, it's actually a game you can play by yourself. Because mm. it's all computerized, and the computer does most of the work, you just kind of play out what you want to do next, and shit just kind of unfolds. Yeah. Well, you know, it started going more into the digital age with the uh, VHS board game hybrids. I actually got to play one of those once. I did not enjoy it. And for anyone who is not sure, if you've ever played Seen It, <laughs> Seen It is a good example of the upgrade to the VHS game. It's actually a lot better because with DVDs you can select menus and just push buttons. You don't have to fast forward and rewind and shit. Yeah. But back in the day, we just had VHS tapes. So you get your board game that comes with a VHS tape. You play the game and then you watch the tape accordingly. Sometimes you do it when you pull a card. Sometimes you do it just for the hell of it. But, you know... It was never quite as fun. Uh, I had one, actually. Um, shit, I don't remember what it was called, but there was some sort of, like, um, not really a dungeon master, but some dude in green paint who was, like... The gatekeeper! I think, yeah. Of the black hole! Because <laughs> guess who else was playing those games? Uh, the spoony one. Yeah. And now our producer's even angrier. That's right. He's thinking about stupid-ass games, uh... <coughs> He's actually screaming into bowls now to stifle his anger. Yeah. He's wearing least, one like a hat. At least until he swings himself backwards and cracks his head on the stove. Eh, you know, whatever. Well, he's facing the other right. way. Yeah. So, yeah. I know I was watching uh, the board game, uh, the VHS board game videos, and he did a whole section on um, Nightmare. Oh, yeah? And, uh, yeah, the whole thing is... <laughs> the gatekeeper... <laughs> I send you to the black hole. Uh. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> you know what I want now? Yeah. Anyway, producer, how's your sex life? <laughs> I want um, I want a room like a VHS room game. Like fucking put on VHS now. <laughs> Just for novelty's sake. Just cut up a copy of the room in an editing thing and put it on a VHS tape. <laughs> like, draw the card, like, fast forward to, like, this many minutes. <laughs> well, hi, Mark. How's your sex life? Uh, jeez. But, yeah, you know, that's it's the problem with the world today is that, you know, no one really appreciates good board games. Yeah. Ain't that the truth. But then again, I mean, who really plays... I mean, it was mostly for children back in the day. You know, children yeah. are like family children kind of stuff. families. These days, families don't ever do anything together. And yeah. children so, don't play... Uh, <laughs> the thing I saw on Facebook a couple of times, it was like one little like text bubble picture that just said, you know, the power went out today, and I went and talked to my family. 
They seem like nice people. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. And you know, it's such a true statement. I mean, whether the kids are crawling around on the floor or, you know, playing with their tablets, nobody actually has time to just sit down and, you know, talk. It's like I remember when I was a kid, uh, every Friday night, TGIF was on. So me and my mom and my dad and my sister would all sit around and watch the shows. You know, Full House, Perfect Strangers, all that crazy crap. We used to watch it. And that was our Friday night. Yeah. And, you know, other shows came and went, and we'd have different days where we'd just sit around and watch TV and then maybe talk about it afterwards, you know. But that's what we used to do, and nobody does that shit anymore. Yeah. I know. And that, do they even have a TGIF anymore? Probably not. I mean, every there's like there's no point in celebrating a particular day because every network treats every day like a special fucking event. Yeah. Every day has a prime time lineup, and every you know day is just as important as every other day. You know, it's not even like must see TV anymore because that's all the time. Yeah. You must see TV constantly. Exactly. If it's um, a must see TV event, that pretty much means that every other event must not be a must see TV. Therefore. <laughs> Like, you might decide to occasionally watch TV. Uh, that doesn't have the same ring to it. That's like our show. This is a must-see episode. Yes. As opposed to, you know, our last episode, the porn parody episode, which was a... Uh, uh, definitely a must-see, but probably for different audiences. There's... I mean, just bear in mind, though, that we are on YouTube, so, I mean, we can only go yeah. so far with Unfortunately, our... Unfortunately, we've only got so much reach in that department... And when we show pussies, we have to, you know, like that. Yeah. Big fuzzy pussies. Yeah, not like... <laughs> uh. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, just, um, board games. <coughs> Monopoly. I hate Monopoly. Hmm. I mean, I've got three different versions of it, but I fucking hate that game. Yeah. The only version of Monopoly I do not hate is the Lord of the Rings version. Because it has one gimmick that no other Monopoly game has that I absolutely love. What's that? You take the ring. It actually comes with a little gold ring, and you put it on the go spot. And there is, uh, on the dice, the one ha is uh, the Eye of Sauron on one of the dice. So you roll two dice. Every time the Eye of Sauron comes up, you move the ring one space. Now eventually, just by rolling the dice, the ring's going to go all the way around the board and hit Mount Doom, which is the last space. When the ring gets to Mount Doom, you stop playing. Everybody counts up their money, and you're done. The game is over. It's like, eventually, when you're done playing Monopoly, you've either just decided to quit because everyone's friggin' bored, because they've been at it for four or five hours, or somebody just flips the board and ro walks away because they're angry about losing. Yeah. And, you know, I hate the same thing about Monopoly... That I hate about games like Farmville, which I'm sure we'll get into that kind of stuff later on. It's that it's too much real life. You know, it's like, okay, I'm broke in real life, so I go play this game for escapism. What happens? I lose because I'm broke. Yeah. It's like, I can't get enough money, so I lose at Monopoly. But instead of sending all my money off to, like, you know, pay bills, I'm, you know, losing it to my daughter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're paying rent on property you don't actually own. You just kind of happen across it. I wonder about the economics of the Monopoly world. It's just... Uh, you know, I heard that the Monopoly guy was in bad standings, you know. I think he went directly to jail. Yeah. Did not pass go. No $200. Which, you know, they actually released more recent versions of Monopoly that were kind of more inflated. <laughs> like, you know, you get more money than just $200 and the rent was higher and there was bigger bills. But... It's still just the same game. I mean, I like the gimmick of Monopoly. Don't get me wrong. I've got Star Wars Monopoly. It's got the cool little pewter figures of, like, you know, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. And, you know, that's cool. I like that. And the Lord of the Rings one has little figures of the characters. And it's like, oh, that's cool. Klingon Monopoly has little pewter miniatures and stuff. And the money looks different. And the board's cool. I mean, there's Doctor Who Monopoly, My Little Pony Monopoly, Power Rangers. Anything you can think of. There's a Monopoly. Yeah. There's even a Myopoly, which is customizable, so yeah. you can just make it whatever you want. You get a software and a pack of stickers that you run through your home printer, and you just make your stuff up. Put yeah. the stickers on the board. I've got that one Marvel Superheroes edition where you basically change out the, pro the property for different characters. 
it's a customizable Monopoly game within the realm of Marvel Enterprises. You know, it's like, I want the Fantastic Four on this block, or I want the Ghost Rider thing here, and I want, you know, She-Hulk in the first square, because she's impossible to land on. But, you know, it's just one of those things where, like, there's a gimmick for it, and I kind of like gimmicks. Yeah. I love novelty. It's just like, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange addiction. You know, you know what I did like? I, the Game of Life. But the reason why I liked the Game of Life was because of, like, how, like, fucky I used to play it. <laughs> Remember we, like, lost the pieces or something, and so, like, I was playing as this rubber fish that you, like, squeeze in its mouth open? Yeah. And, like, if I landed on your car, I, like, made the fish eat you. And eventually we got to that part that had the stream. So I just jumped ship and then swam away and... <laughs> the Game of Life with a giant fish that eats people? Exactly, like real life. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Because you know what? Yeah, maybe you'll get kids or, you know, start your business, or maybe you'll be eaten by a giant fucking fish. Maybe you'll never pay off your student loans. Yeah. Because, you know, if you really think about it in life, there are people that are eaten by giant fish. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. like it's implausible. It happens yeah. every year. And there's also people that, you know, pay their student loans and become successful or don't, you know, get saddled with a bunch of kids and just drive around in a minivan for all of eternity. I'm just gonna game of sit here and hold my nuts. That's right. Squeeze the nuts. If only we had these for the porn parody video. Walnut. I'll bust this nut. Uh, or shoot it in his face. <laughs> uh, this is becoming a fail video very, very shortly. You know, honestly, I like to treat every video as a fail video until it proves itself otherwise. Yeah. Usually we pull it out of the bag. This could be a total wash. Because he's going out of town, and I lack any real motivation. You know. Well, we're just doing this for the hell of it, but, um... That's really all we've been doing this for ever since we quit the whole fitness gig. It's like, we just basically jerking off on camera. But not literally. Well, unless you go to his, his RedTube account. Which, you know, that's kind of a thing. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Anyway, I think we'll go ahead and call it in uh, for this one. Mm. One thing... Um, oh, it's a really short one, though. I think we could probably do better. Uh, I think it's fine. But uh, one thing I do want to say, though, is that... Uh, yeah, for anybody who is uh, interested in knowing... Uh, we're not just going to do these uh, these regular Unreal Talk episodes. Uh, there will be points in the future sometimes we'll just do, like, random shit. Yeah. You know, I might do, like, a vlog every so often. He might do something every so often. But we're not really limited to what we're doing here. Yes, unfortunately, we could do anything at any time. All right, so th thanks for watching another episode of Unreal Talk. This was Brian. That was Dave. Uh, you know, another thing. It was like this. <laughs> Card like, games. Like, oh. sub like, subscribe, and continue the conversation in the comments down below. Oh, that's it. Let's play Pimp the Backhanding. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, ow. Coming up, <laughs> coming up in the future. That was enthusiastic. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>